Where is that hippopotamus that calls herself Odwak? You idiot. Why are you jealous of a mambo? I always knew you were useless. That's why I never liked you. I was only friends with you because of a mambo. Ekaite, don't insult me. I have had enough of your insult and name calling. Once upon a time, in the southern part of Nigeria, there lived a poor widow who had a fat daughter, Udrak. Udrak was a chubby young woman, known for her love for food and her fear of water. Despite her size, she had two close friends, Ekaite and Emabon, whom she had known since childhood. Among the three friends, Emabon stood out as the most beautiful with captivating curves and radiant smile. She sometimes let her beauty get in her way by looking down on other people and always ready to insult people at every given opportunity. Her beauty radiates like the morning sun. The men in the village want to be with her and everyone wants a glimpse of such beauty. Ekaiti, on the other hand, though not as beautiful and curvy as Emma Bond, had her dreams as wide as a savannah. She had always envisioned herself with lots of servants working for her and also an obedient rich husband who will, who worships her and do whatever she wants. Udrak was the thickest among the, her friends with her ebony skin. She came from a poor family with no siblings. Her friends always tease her about her looks and how it will prevent her from getting a good suitor because of her size. Emma Bond has always been picky about who she will marry. She has an unending list of qualities of her future husband. The list changes every day and gets longer too. She only admires rich suitors. Udrak's mother is a very hard-working woman. She lost her husband and her in-laws took all the lands and property they had and left them with nothing. She worked tirelessly to make sure her daughter lacked nothing among her pairs. She always advises the girls to marry who they love and to enjoy their marriage. One morning, as the three friends were on their way to the market, they noticed a young man selling beads. The beads are so lovely, they all wanted to buy. They went closer and the man saw a marble. He offered her a beautiful colored sparkling beads. This will show your curls and will look beautiful on your skin, the young man said. Emma Bon took the bead reluctantly and asked for the price. The young man said she could have it as a gift in appreciation for embracing his shop with such beauty. Ikaite was so jealous as she wasn't giving the beads. I think the young man likes you, Udrak told Imabu. Well, he's not up to my standards. I can only marry a rich man or a rich prince. I can't be this beautiful and settle for a mere bead seller. You are right, my friend, Ekaite said. He's just a local bead seller who deserves rich husbands. If I see anyone I love and he also lost me and respects me, I'll marry the person. I don't care if he's rich or not. Look at what happened to my mother when my father died. Rich or not, I will marry, hence there is love. Udrak, when I talk about us getting a, a rich husband, I didn't include you. No rich man in his right senses We want to marry a chubby lady that likes food like you, Ekaite said laughing. They all laughed over it. Her friends always teases her about her size at every given opportunity without considering how she feels about it. And she doesn't like that. When she went to the market the next day, she saw the bid seller who asked her after her friends. He let her introduce himself as Appan. I'm Udrak, she replied. A kite saw Udrak talking to the bid seller. She went to fabricate lies to Emma Bon. On her way home from the market, Udrak saw her friend. You know he likes me, yet you went to throw your dirty fat body at him. Are you that desperate for a husband, Imabon shouted. 
Only greeted him. He was asking after you, Imabon. That's all. Liar. I saw them holding hands. Security added. There is no such thing. Why are you angry, Imabon? You said you can't marry a maid bit seller. Foolish girl. He likes me and I can decide what to do with him or not. I don't have anything to do with him. Like I have told you. He asked after you and that was it. After the fight, they stopped talking to Odrak. Her mother noticed what happened to her and her friends. She told her if they truly are her friends, that they will believe her. Mama, you know they are the only friends I have. Your life is not tied to them. It's obvious they don't like you. So stop forcing the friendship. Odrak's mother noticed after a few weeks that the friends were back together with their daughter. She asked Odrak if her friends had apologized to her. No, Mama. I went to them and apologized. I don't want us to continue fighting. Be careful with those two, Odrak. I don't know what you see in them. You have to learn to stand up for yourself and what you believe in. I raised you right and not to be a shadow of someone else. The three girls started their friendship as if nothing happened. But Ekaita still has resentment towards Udrak and jealousy towards Imabon. Basi was the king's son and Imabon's crush. She always wished he could notice her. Tomorrow, I would like you girls to accompany me to the market. I need to get a new set of footwears, Imabon told her friends. I don't think that will be possible. I'll be helping my mother tomorrow. She's walking at the palace and I promise to help her, Odrak said. Do you know if Basi will be around? Emabo asked. I don't know, but I'll find out tomorrow. Don't worry, I will come and visit you there myself. The next day, Odrak and her mother were walking in the palace when her friends came. Emabo kept wagging her waist and shaking her breast around the palace. See, she eventually saw the prince. I am Imabun. I came to see my friend who works for you. You are welcome, the prince said. Weeks later, Imabun started frequenting the palace as she and the prince started a relationship. One day, Azudrak was cleaning the palace with her mother. She had the king telling the queen how worried they are because of the prince's temper and how he beats women at every provo little provocation. Udrak was shocked that such a lovely gentleman could be so devilish and cruel. She was scared that he might harm her friend. But Imabon was so happy with the relationship that she couldn't stop talking about how perfect the prince was and how beautiful their kids would look. Udrak was scared to tell Imabon what she heard about the prince as they might think that she is jealous of her and the prince. The nice day was a market day, as the three friends normally go for years now. When Udra got to their spot, she met only a kite. They both waited for a while. They didn't see him album. They assumed she bailed on them. That evening, they went to her house, only to discover her cheeks were red and swollen. What is wrong with you? They both asked her. She said she had been down with cold since yesterday. Odrak was not convinced because of what he heard about the prince. She delayed till Ekaiti left, and she asked Imabon if the prince was hurting her. Why would you come up with such allegations? I just told you I have the flu, and I'm down with cold. My beautiful friend, Imabon. I heard the king talking to the queen about the prince's temper. Please, if he is hurting you, tell me, how can you say such a thing about the prince? Do you want to die? The king and the queen have been so kind to you and your mother since your father died, and this is how you repaid them? I'm only looking out for you, my friend, Udrak said. I don't need your help. If I need help, I know whom to ask help from. Do you love him or are you only interested in him because of the crown, the money and the title that comes with it? Odrak, have you been in love? How can you talk about what you have not experienced? 
It doesn't matter if I love him or not. He's perfect for me. And that's all that matters. Please leave my house, Imabon orders Oduak. Imabon went ahead to tell Ekaite what Oduak said about the prince. Don't mind that fat elephant that smells like rotten fish. She's jealous of the prince. Imabon, you have to tell the prince what Oduak said. It's time we deal with that girl and her family. No, Ekaite. I don't want the queen to stop helping them. What if the king and the queen decide to banish them? Will you be happy about that, Ekaite? Well, I don't like what she said and I'm going to deal with her. Ekaite went to Uduak's house. Where is that hippopotamus that calls herself Uduak? You idiot. Why are you jealous of him, Abu? I always knew you are useless. That's why I never liked you. I was only friends with you because of Emabo. Ekaite, don't insult me. I have had enough of your insult and name calling. So you can talk back at me, Oduak. I don't blame you, you fool. Oduak told her mother all that has happened. Her mother was angry at her, as she had warned her about those two. Just pray they don't tell the prince about this. Oduak. When will you learn that those two hate you? Why are you putting out our lives in danger for them? Mama, I'm very sorry. I have truly learned my lesson. Imabon had an elaborate wedding in the village with lots of respected kings and queens. Her wedding was the talk of the town. She didn't invite Uduak, but she had completely caught ties with her after she told the prince about what Uduak said. The prince told her to choose between him and her friends. Of course, she chose him. Ekaite, on the other hand, was invited. She wore a very seductive dress, showing her body, so as to attract a rich husband. She has decided never to have anything to do with Oduak. All she wanted is to marry a rich prince like her friend Emma Bong. Oduak started learning how to love herself and also stand up for herself. She completely forgot about her friends and how they treated her. That man, the bid seller, always teases her whenever she comes to the market as they've been friends ever since. One day she was complaining to Akman about how she wanted to lose weight. But her problem was food because she likes eating and also she hates water, which is why she smells most time. A man that truly loves you will love you for whom you are and not for your looks, Apan said. But you have to learn to take good care of yourself as a woman and look good. Meanwhile, you can try eating bit by bit, not everything at once. Remember the food is not running away. And always take a bath, whether you like water or not, Akman teases her. I'll walk on myself. I don't like the way people treat me or look at me when I walk past them. Thank you, Akman. You have been a true friend. Udrak left. On her way back home, she heard someone screaming her name. Udrak, Udrak. She looked back and saw the palace maiden. The princess demands your presence immediately at the palace. Uduak followed the maiden back to the palace. As Uduak entered the palace, she noticed her friend crying. What is it, Umabon? Why are you crying? And why are your eyes swollen? Uduak, it's the prince. What you said is true. He hates me whenever he's angry. My friend, you have to run for your life before he kills you. No, Uduak, it has not gotten to that. He will change. He feels sorry after beating me. That is a sign that he will change. He has promised me that he will change. They never change in my bone. Please think about what I told you. You can run to another village with your daughter and start a new life there. I can help you escape, my friend. The prince is a demon and he can never change. Remember what I told you. I am not leaving my husband for another woman. My daughter needs me. And she needs her father. 
You want me to start suffering to raise a child on my own? I am the princess and will soon become the queen. I can't leave him because he got angry and hit me. I'm really worried about him, Mabu. Focus that energy on getting a man, Udrak. Are you not tired of staying in your mother's house? I will get a man when God wants me to, Udrak said. Udrak left Imabon after trying so hard to convince her to speak up or to leave the prince, Bruce Abortive. She started taking good care of herself, bathing at interval, eating with ease, and doing all up and asked her to do. Up and saw her one day and couldn't stop staring. She looked beautiful with her body and smells nice too. Wow, Udrak, I can't believe my eyes. You have really changed. You are radiating. I like you and I've always liked you ever since we met. I would like us to be more than just friends if you approve, Udrak. You never liked me. You liked my friend Emma Bong. Is it because she's married now? Oh, it's now that you are noticing me because I'm taking care of myself now. No, old dog. I only admired her beauty. I never asked her to marry me or to date me. Haven't you noticed that I enjoy your company even before now? Well, I enjoy your company too. We can be more than friends. Ekaite rejected all her suitors because they are not rich or they are not prince. Her mother advised her to settle for whom she loved and not riches, but she refused. Udrak married Akpan, who happens to be a big businessman, as he had other people selling bids for her fabrics and jewelry too. Ekaiti heard about Akpan and Udrak. She decided to visit them. When she entered their compound, she couldn't believe her eyes. My friend, your husband is rich. You knew a mere bid seller could possess all this. I'm happy for you. Does he have a rich friend who are looking for wife? Nkaiti asked. I don't know, Dwak told her. I will go and meet him and find out. That won't be necessary, Kaite. Please, I don't want you around my husband. Dwak caught ties with Kaite. She knew she was never a good friend to her. And Druma also had it that Ekaite sleeps with married men for money to live a flamboyant lifestyle. Three years later, Udrak was in her house when she heard Ekaite screaming, The worst has happened, my friend. What is it? Is it Mabo? She is dead. What? How? Was she giving birth? No. I heard she fell and died. Ekaite said. Udrak knew that wasn't the truth. She knew it was the prince that killed her. It's her words against the prince, and they won't believe her. I think something happened to Imabu. I believe you now, Udrak, and I'm very sorry for doubting and accusing you. Imabu will still be alive if I didn't accuse you and encourage her to marry the prince, Ekaite said. Udrak and Ekaite agreed that they would confront the prince for the sake of their late friend, Imabu. Ekaite and Udrak confronted the prince. The villagers believed her, as most of the maidens confessed how the prince beat a marble in the palace. The prince was punished, and the king and queen dethroned for covering up their son and hiding the truth about a marble's death. Ekaite, though not married, realized that marriage is not about riches or titles, but about love, respect, honesty, trust, and understanding. The moral of this story is twofold. First, it emphasizes the importance of speaking up against domestic violence. Udrak's initial reluctance to confront Emma Bonambasi's abusive behavior highlights the fear and hesitation many face when addressing such sensitive issues. However, it also demonstrates the crucial role of speaking out as it can lead to protection and well-being of those in abusive relationships. Secondly, 
The story on the cross calls the significance of choosing friends wisely. Mudrak's friendship with Emma Bonane Kaite, though long standing, ultimately proved toxic and detrimental to her well being. Through Udwag's journey, we learn the importance of surrounding ourselves with supportive and positive influence as they can greatly impact our lives and success in life. Thank you. Kindly subscribe, like, and tell us what you think about the story in the comment section. Thank you.